Good morning. Good morning. Christoph Straube. Yes. yes I'm Gordon, nice to meet you. Yes. Okay, so just for context, just for the audience, uh, we are doing this slightly differently than my normal interview or my normal show. Because you and I met maybe a month or just over before yeah. that. I invited you to come on to the show and you said, why don't we do it in the podcast studio. a podcast studio? Which is great because I've been on the receiving end of these sort of interviews, but I haven't um, done it myself in a podcast studio. So I, I think you may be starting a trend. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're going to be talking about this. You seem to be a trendsetter. So, you know, you're bringing good things in every element of your life. So that's fantastic. I think there's a lot to talk about. I want to get your background. I want to get your history. You know, I think it's awesome. You're German because that, that scratches my German itch, That's which is fan, just something worth exploring. But the reason, the primary reason I think we're going to have you on the show right now, or the reason we want to talk, is you're doing a very innovative concept for Dubai, for the Middle East. It's your Green Tower Initiative. Yeah. And so what I'd like you to do is give me the 20 seconds on that, or 15, 20 seconds on that. Then we're going to cover your background. Because where you ended up is somewhere amazing. And it's hmm. I want people watching this to understand your progression so maybe they can emulate it. Hmm. And then we'll go from there. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Very good. And, yes. I, and I, I got to say for the audience, you know, you're all friendly. This is my first time doing this in a podcast studio, so I'm kind of feeling my way a little bit. I, I admit it. But please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I'm about to build the first green tower, like a passive house, energy saving, carbon zero tower with about 60 floors here in Dubai, mm -hmm. which is completely different to what you have uh, normally here in Dubai, like bling bling towers, all yes. nice. But there we are really talking about keeping the sun out, having low energy costs, um, mm. having uh, different glasses with shadow systems and really a green building with a sky garden and uh, solar sky panels. Garden. And so there you, the focus is really to have something carbon zero and mm. um, long term. Interesting. OK, we're going to go into this in great depth, or, yeah. you know, a little bit later in the show. But now now we want to back up. Where are you from? Yeah, so I'm originally from Germany. Which so part? I Germany Frankfurt around okay. the corner. I'm living mm -hmm. there in a little bit part. It's called Königstein Taunus. It's like a um, mm -hmm. little village uh, where some on the, in the mountains, but like in 20 minutes you are in Frankfurt Got it. city. So I was born there, raised there, went to school there. But then with 12 years I went to Mallorca to Spain. So my father went there, um, nice. and uh, I just did uh, my studies there. So I did school in Spain, mm -hmm. and uh, in the summer holidays there, there are three months. Mm -hmm. He always forced me to work, and he forced me to work on construction sites. So I had okay. To so before <laughs> before, before you we talk about your slavery, yeah. okay. <laughs> so is it is it true that Mallorca is a little bit of a German colony? Well, yeah, in in, in it is, but in different parts. So we have some uh, towns which are like completely full of Germans. Mm. You even have German bars, German restaurants, German supermarket. But then you also have some uh, little um, towns where you have like English people. So there are two, mm. three places where only people from the UK are there. So it's uh, completely mixed, I would say. And um, in these days, you always also have a lot of people from Norway, from, Canada, from um, Denmark, mm. uh, from the Netherlands, so completely mixed. It's and now even Americans are coming as they're now flying directly from America to Mallorca. So Mallorca is going through a lot of different, I think, uh, life parts there the last years. I'm mm -hmm. always there. I'm currently also building there something. Uh -huh. uh, so um, so I'm always on the island uh, sometimes and mm -hmm. uh, that I always notice and I also still have a lot of friends from the school time which are still there or working there or having their companies there which mm -hmm. just stayed in Mallorca and not like me. Um, yeah. You, you've back. had quite the adventure. Yes. Okay, so you, you were born in a small town outside of Frankfurt. Yes. Which is actually where I spent the summer. Yeah. Funny enough, uh, we were talking about that. And then you had a brief period growing up in Frankfurt, but then your dad trundled you down to Mallorca. Yeah. Where, you know, where you were suffering in the beautiful <laughs> Mediterranean climate. Well, actually, we had a house yes. at the top of a hill with amazing sea view. Right. So my father had a big house and we had a, I had a garage built in mm. a small apartment. So I was living there actually like alone. So I... Went in, had one room, and mm -hmm. had a bathroom. So, and my window was really big with a complete sea view, but it was always closed because I had no interest in the sea view. I was always sleeping in the day because in the night there was a lot of parties. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. So that does. This, this explains a lot. Okay, yeah. and then you're, you're, you know, when you weren't doing the parties, your dad was making you work every summer. Yeah, you're beginning to say. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's why he said we had three months of summer holidays, mm. and there was this one option which I would wanted to to do. It's like 
whole day beach in mm -hmm. the evening party and then sleep long, go to the beach. So sure. these are all my friends that, but he said then suddenly, oh no, no, <laughs> that's not the plan. Mm -hmm. So you have to work for the money for the weekend for going out for parties and to the beach. Okay. And within the week you have to work. You have to know how, how to- How old were you at this time? Uh, 14. Okay. So 14, 15. So, and then we, are, we were allowed to drive scooter with 14 and he also said, okay, I buy you the first scooter, but then you have yourself uh, mm -hmm. gain money to buy gasoline, insurance, and repair the scooter, or I tuned the scooter. So, yeah. <laughs> so he made me work, first of all, in a, in a, in a car um, garage. So mm -hmm. I had to like clean cars, change oil, change tires. And did he find like you this. the job? Yeah, or yeah, you, okay. yeah, of course. I didn't, I didn't speak Spanish at this time, so it was quite difficult. Mm -hmm. But I learned it like in, within a year. And then he made me work in, it's called La Obra, it's a, mm -hmm. so the construction. So mm -hmm. there you work from seven o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. And I spoke already Spanish, but you earned a lot of money for me For me as a 14 or 15, well, I was 15 mm -hmm. uh, year old. It was a lot of money. Are, are you fluent in Spanish now? Yes, of say? course. Yeah, yeah. 100%? Yeah, uh, completely. I can speak Spanish. That's great. So yeah. just... Si quieres, I, I, podemos I, hablar español. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Los Angeles, but you probably do better than me. So did, I always love languages and people who speak it. So obviously fluent English, obviously yeah. fluent German and Spanish. Anything yeah. else in your... Yeah, Italy, Italian. Italian. So I, in my previous job, before I, I did my own real estate company, mm -hmm. I was working and selling um, plastic granulate and working for Italy. So I had a private Italian teacher. Okay. So I also can... Fr French and Italian, I can read, I can understand. Like speaking is a little bit different because I mix it up. If I would live now for some month in Italy or in French, in mm -hmm. France, then I would uh, speak it as well. Oh, they're, they're all very close. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, I think it's common actually to sort yeah. of mix them together. So, and you promised that a year from now, when I'm completely fluent in German, we'll yeah. do this again off Deutsch. Of course. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> what about it? No. Yeah. Wait, so so then I so then yeah. he made me work there, and I said, okay, I do it because it was like I think in these times it was like if you change it to euros, mm -hmm. it's maybe it was only six euros, but it was this this uh, the time where the euro was not there yet, you know, mm -hmm. so it was peseta. So it was quite a lot of money in these days for mm -hmm. me, and I had the money like every time at the end of the week. So at great weekends because I could spend. Like and you're, you're a kid at this yes. point, so yeah. But, yeah, but you, you could go to the disco club there with mm. 14, 15 years, no problem. And we bought there already a little bottle of vodka and had parties, and mm. then on the beach, and I could tune my motorcycle. So I had a lot of fun this time. But of course, what the good thing was, I learned construction from the lowest point possible. So mm. I had to mix. Sure everything i had to carry stones and so i was really on a construction site for three months in complete heat mm -hmm. so what i often tell or most like tell the people when i talk about this time i always say my highlight was on uh, lunchtime mm -hmm. you got like a one liter bottle of glass of um, cold uh, san miguel beer which is a beer a spanish beer oh really okay so oh san miguel yeah san miguel so mm -hmm. so that was like the highlight there you know so like at one o'clock you were sitting there with your spanish colleagues so here you are three years old yeah, working uh, in construction uh, site yeah. and then you had some beer. some little lunch you know mm -hmm. they had like bocadillos this baguettes with something inside mm -hmm. and then you got this bottle of beer eh? and then it was uh, always a little bit fun uh, Sounds it, took, great. it took one hour of uh, carrying stones until the alcohol was out, <laughs> and then you could go yes. perfectly on. Uh, yeah. mm. So that was a great time. And uh, from there, when I finished my school there, I mm. went to Cologne. Okay. I, I, so uh, back to Germany. Yeah, back to Germany, but another city. And mm -hmm. um, I wanted to try something different. And then I studied, um, I did an apprenticeship as an industrial clerk. In Actually, you said... I'm, I'm trying to understand the German educational system because it's yeah. different. So the you do first high school mm -hmm. and you finish with a certain degree. Then you either you, you, so you pause for a second. You actually have a you have a certain degree from high school or you have your yeah, it abitur. It depends. Just in general. Yeah, in, in German you have abitur. Okay. But I did in I did English level. I did A levels and oh. IGCSE exam like from Cambridge in okay. uh, in Mallorca. So it was an international school. So and then he, there was the op, uh, the, uh, the option to go to study somewhere in England, okay. um, Cambridge or whatever. But I was not a guy to to study in this, at this point in time. I wanted to go back to Germany, and mm -hmm. then and then I decided to do an apprenticeship as an industrial clerk because there, industrial clerk. Okay. You, yeah, you already um, you learn something. It's like a study, but you also work and you already earn some money. Yes. And I went to one of the biggest chemical um, industry companies. It's mm. called, at this time it was called Basel. Now it's called mm. Leindel Basel. Yeah. It's a very, very big um, company who's mm. producing plastic granulate, polyethylene and polypropylene. Okay. And uh, yeah, I did the apprenticeship there. And when I finished, they, they took me over mm. and, I, and I sold plastic granulate over the internet. So it was quite funny. So I sold uh, trucks with 25 tons of plastic granulate over the internet, like eBay, you know? So and I got to ask again, how old were you? There I was like 
21 or no to air 21 20 21 okay so you're you're a young guy yeah <laughs> i mean right you know young guy still but you're very young guy at that point yeah and you're already in business mm. you, you know shipping doing serious things yeah that, that's so great. i was i was at that point in time i had a very cool um mentor and boss he was mm. from the netherlands uh, unfortunately he died but mm. he was called job Botterhus. he's a very nice guy so it's mm. such a great time i learned so many things from him and uh, he told me, yeah, make a study beside mm. the work and then you can reach higher levels because it's like a system how you can gain or gain more money in Germany. Mm -hmm. It's a chemical industry. It's all like predefined. Mm -hmm. So then I studied um, international business and marketing okay. on an evening school and uh, finished this. And then I, then I was increasing there and I took over Netherlands and uh, Austria and Switzerland and Italy. Mm -hmm. And I was selling their plastic run lot, So I did a very good job. But the pers perspective mm. was very, like, uh, there was, like, uh, very quickly the end. So there were not a lot of options to have, like, uh, in, a, in the future, a similar life than my father offered mm. me. You know, So my father was doing real estate, and he, he quit then his job, went mm. to Mallorca, and retired there. So Got I it. lived there in a nice house, big house, and it was a great life. So, of course, my motivation was very big to do the same. So you did this interesting. So you had an impression from a very young age of what a successful exit looks like yeah. and what's possible. Yeah. And then you also had the ability to tell that what you were doing was cool and you were young and it was something, but it where you were you could see out in the future the progression wouldn't get you to something like what your dad had. Yeah. So and you had that realization. So I said, so okay, I have to change something. So I just quit the job. Now let me I, let me pause again uh, again here. So I think you know a stereotype of the sort of the German mentality is you you choose your profession, you choose your job, hmm. you stay in there, and then you know forty years later you got your <laughs> yeah you, know, you, you try you, it you know, and you know, renda or yeah. pensioner, and you know you, you drink beer in the pub yeah. or something maybe that you know but that's not you yeah that was not me okay because I I had this life living in Mallorca I was always in all holidays traveling somewhere so hmm. I was already born into a different world so so do I had to do something different sure and I saw my life going there in exactly the way you just uh, described so I said okay and I you woke to, up screaming in yeah, the middle yeah. of the night in a sweat and then my yeah. I went to Yop and I told hmm. him Globe I have to quit it's, I'm very sorry. It's so, so much fun here. Mm. He did a really big farewell party in Rotterdam for me because he was so sad that I leave. But he said it's the right thing. He said yeah. you're you're far too good to be at be here in this chemical industry and sitting here from uh, nine to to five. Yeah, and sure. uh, he said you have to do something different. So they were all like happy and unhappy. So one eye crying, one eye laughing mm -hmm. that I that I left. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I just quit the job, went to another city and studied um, real estate. Okay, Wh which city? Uh, Saarbrücken, it's uh, near the French uh, oh, border. Oh, right, sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, because there was a private university and I could do like in a one year hard course, mm. one or two years, I remember. But it was quite hard every day learning from from the morning to the evening and mm. on the weekend even you had courses and tests. Mm. And then I went back to Frankfurt and I just... Sorry, so when you were in Saarbrücken, it was a real estate yes. specialization. Yeah, yeah like. it was a real estate academy where you can only study real estate. So Fascinating. Okay. Yeah, so you were st I, could, I studied uh, real estate agents or broker. I studied mm -hmm. um, how to open a company, how to uh, lead a company, uh, how to do project development, how mm -hmm. to do um, refurnishment of uh, apartments, mm -hmm. and how to do... Um, to, to like have having in stock a lot of apartments, you know, just like investments. Okay. So there were like different courses and then all combined, you had like this diploma um, for real estate. And what was the quality of the experience? The, very good. What, what, was right. Because, you know, I'm not the type of guy who goes there just with books learning. Mm -hmm. So that's why I choose this one. Also, my previous study, I choose the marketing international business one where you have to go there and sit there like in a class. Mm -hmm. Because if you give me books or online, I would not mm -hmm. do anything. So right. I, maybe I would sit there shortly and then the, the the mobile rings or some friends call mm. and you you got a lot but if you have if you pay a lot of money for the university and you have to go there for me it's just the best thing because then you really can learn mm. I, i'm sure there are people a lot of people who can just learn sitting there in front of their pc but i think it's more effective if somebody can explain it to you and it's a little bit more near to the real sure. business wow. I think it also depends on the topic. I mean, if it's something like computer programming, yeah. it's almost outdated yeah, to go to school. But if it's real estate, I, I imagine part of the benefit is your classmates. Yeah. 
I would yeah, you can. I mean, in the breaks, you're sitting mm. outside drinking coffee or having lunch, and you're discussing ah, which company you work, which mm. company you work. And I was like, oh, I work in no company. I just quit the job. <laughs> I get like Arbeitslosengeld. So mm. I, I said, okay, yeah. I study, and uh, it's a hard time currently, but I think I will make it later. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's how I did my study there. So it was super. Okay, yeah. so when you're done in Saarbrücken. Yeah, then I went back to Frankfurt. Okay. Because also my mother was there, my grandmother and my brother uh, mm -hmm. moved this this time to Dubai. Okay. So he's younger than me. He he just uh, he did yeah, it's funny. He he quit uh, so he finished school mm -hmm. and then did, appren did an apprenticeship or um, a practicum mm -hmm. at Engels and Völkers in Dubai okay. at real estate. Famous. Yeah, so Very he big. was there 6 months and he never mm -hmm. came back. So <laughs> he's still here. So it's, it's 17 years ago. Okay. So uh, he's still here. And uh, but he also went into the real estate direction. Mm -hmm. But then okay, I said okay, I go back to Frankfurt and uh, be there a little bit with my uh, mother and my grandmother mm -hmm. and uh, taking care there. But what, what, were, what were you doing professionally in Frankfurt? Yeah, at this point nothing. So I finished the school, the, mm -hmm. the university, and then I opened uh, my W and L company. Okay. So I opened it in 2010. Um, I opened it with, it was called uh, Ich AG, so me AG. So it was mm. a, a, um, a system provided by the government mm. that you get a 12 month uh, partly of your, from your last job, the money to open your own uh, limited company. Okay. But you had to provide a business plan, analyzes, uh, prognosis, and uh, presentations. And you had to go to the government, make like a pitch. Mm -hmm. And then they say, yeah, okay, we believe that it could work. And then you get like a stamp, and then I opened my limited company. So this is this GmbH, you know, in German. That's very progressive. Yeah. For Germany. Yeah, but it was in this. In, in, That's great. I think the program only lasts three, four years or something. Mm -hmm. Then they closed it because most of the people they took twelve months of money and didn't do anything. But I really, mm -hmm. I, you, you actually did it. I did it. Heaven forbid. But I, in the, in this whole 12th, first yeah. month, I didn't earn any money. It was so difficult. I was working, I was starting as a broker. Mm. I went from door to door. I went from all my contacts, from my parents, from mm. family, from friends, and asked them, do you have any real estate which I can do the renting or the selling for you? So I mm. did uh, prospects. I went around and put it in the post boxes. So it was so much work. Mm. And I didn't just didn't work. It was really, really difficult. Mm. And... At the end, I think after nine or ten months, mm. I had one one thing in a, in a small town, which mm. I, I rented them out, and I earned the first money. So and I was quite happy. Mm -hmm. But I still said, oh, it's so it was really annoying because you drive then, then you get some things to rent or to sell, mm -hmm. and you have then on the weekend viewings. Yes. So I go wake up in the morning, I go there, dress myself, prepare everything, mm. and then sometimes the people just don't come. And then I don't go on the phone because I don't know what they did, you know. So it's there or they decided for something else. So it was. Sure. It's not that because a lot of people always say, ah, the real estate broker, they do some viewings and get a lot of money, but they have to see the whole progress, you know, like getting a real estate to sell or to rent mm -hmm. and then making all these viewings, making all the um, exposés and everything. And this, it takes so much time. So mm -hmm. at the end, maybe I, I work two, three months and I rent out one thing and I get like, this time was like 4,000 euros, I think I gained. So for three well, I, th I think maybe you're going to say this already. I'm sure long term you would have been successful. Yeah. Stuff like this is compounding yeah, interest. You know, so you need, I have, so my, my impression was there and it was later, of course, working, mm. um, that you need at least two, three years in the market mm. to that people know you and you have to go step by step. So maybe you're lucky in the beginning and you get, well, I don't know, one villa to sell and you sell it and you earn, I don't know, 50, 100,000 euros. Mm -hmm. And then you can live for, out of this. But there the problem is when the first time you earn so much money, you mm -hmm. also spend it as well as quickly as you got it. Get, get it, no? So because yeah, you don't yeah. know it, you're young. No? So I had also and, and, and you think you don't realize it was luck. Yeah. You're like, oh, I just got a natural talent. I, uh, I'm uh, I'm the master of real estate. Huh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um and then uh, then I I got from a friend a plot offered. Mm -hmm. Told me, look, I have a plot. Maybe you know somebody you can buy it. That you can build like 12 houses there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm. And then I was thinking, okay. Frankfurt or? Yeah, yeah, Frankfurt, the okay. same town where I live now, Königstein. Okay. And then I was thinking, okay, why not I do it myself? So then I did, uh, through my experience of, of studying international business and marketing, mm -hmm. I did a business plan, a presentation. Mm -hmm. And then I called my father and said, uh, give me all the richest people you know in uh, Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. um, I, want to, I want to present them my ideas. Mm -hmm. So then I went step by step. I think I had 10 or 12, or something like this, uh, on meetings, on pitch. And the last and one... And it also sounds like you and your dad had a good relationship. Yeah, yeah, always. Have a good yeah, yeah. He's still always in my um, in my management board and gives me tips and uh, mm -hmm. tries to help me always because he has a lot of experience. I mean, even he does not work anymore, but he's mm. 
He knows so many things even now when the market crashed down in Germany. He knew before that the interest can go up. Nobody believed from the young generation. No, no one saw interest like seven, eight percent. You know, that's the old generation who already had to handle with this yes. and know how to handle with this. The new generation has no idea. And this is still going on, right? Yeah, now. this is a there. big deal. Yeah. And I think we will have a hard year still this year in Germany. Interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking about that. So you, you see this plot, you see an opportunity to build yeah. 12 units. You yeah. go to your dad, you go. And then I got one guy, very nice guy. He said, OK, I believe in you. And he just transferred me like two million euros. Mm. So he, of course, he got half of the company. So we did like a 50-50. Mm. And then we planned everything. I did a new, a new planning of like apartments, double houses and townhouses. So completely mm -hmm. different to what was for before. So to maximize, maximize the living area on mm. the plot. And then we started construction. It worked quite well. Mm. So at the end, we sold everything, but we didn't make any money. So <laughs> that was a little issue which mm. was learning because there were coming some issues within the construction, which I didn't learn in Mallorca, which were because of some rules in Germany, mm. you had to build some streets so the cars can go in both directions. That was a huge amount of money. Mm. And then the water canal, uh, you needed to uh, shoot it through another building on another plot. We needed to pay them. And mm. there were so many things happening. And the apartments were difficult to sell. So at the end, I had to sell it at, to a global investor mm. with like 20% discount. So and we, how did your partner react? Well, he... he he was all the time uh, including this whole process, so mm. it's just bad luck. I mean, at the end, he didn't lose any money. He just mm. didn't got any interest, and uh, I didn't earn any money. I worked there two years, and mm. but I, I learned a lot. And well, sure. I mean, well, everyone uh, has yeah. to go so, uh, this. Of course, luckily, I had support from the family, so it was not uh, I was I could live, you know. But mm. and uh, due to the to the sellings, I got like always little commissions. Mm. So we did the sales ourselves. So it was okay. But out of this, I learned the the fact that the the plot development mm. as itself was much more interesting because the guy who bought the plot for a very low price and mm. did the master plan. That some that you can build houses there. He made a lot of money without a lot of risk. No building risks, no building costs. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. yeah, I was two years every day on this construction site. It was <laughs> I'm sure you probably you should have just lived there. Yeah, get a tent. Yeah, I lived. I lived around. Uh, mm. I lived in the house of my grandmother, so mm. I had not to pay any rent. So that was also luckily. And yeah, then I then I is, is the German product process very bureaucratic or is it just normal? No, we for, are for real for real estate well, development. We are very bureaucratical. We are very bureaucratical. So okay. I um, I mean we can uh, switch quickly. I have uh, I started a permission to build uh, forty apartments in Frankfurt, mm. well one city um, higher, another city, uh, two years ago mm. in October two thousand twenty one. I put in the everything. application. Yes, application, and uh, I got uh, the permission last year uh, on the twenty first of December. So two years. So this, this, and it, was there a process involved no, back and just, forth? It was or just problems just in this government mm. on their processes. So they are really overloaded. Home office, nobody's really working. Uh, the misunderstandings. Then you, you do something. Then they tell you, no, I want it different. I want it different. Then the political changed. You have now the green people more. Then they wanted to have green on the roofs of the carports. Mm. They wanted to have more kids space uh, playground. They want to have. Uh, I had to make space for 83 bicycles in the cellar. So all very things which were really annoying. I mm. mean, I understand them, but they could have told us at the first time. You know, so we yeah. lost like half a million of interest on all on these two years because you know you buy the plot, you buy it, everything, and mm. uh, it has to be paid, and you have the interest running every month. Mm -hmm. And you cannot do anything because you're waiting and for permission. And are you paying interest or is it accumulating? No, it's a pay. Yeah, you have to pay, of course. Okay. So I, I had well in the US, it could potentially be added to the loan no. with with, a, with an idea that your liquidity is coming no. later. But it sounds yeah, like in Germany, you're you're paying every. Yeah, yeah, every, yeah. Every, there, are, there are different models. You can pay every month or you can mm. pay at the end. So, but mm. at the end, the interests are there. And if the government takes then two years to get the permission for such a small building, mm. it was very sad. So, so in this time, when, when I did this project, my first project, the permission mm. was not the problem. The, the problems came later that the, the government said, yeah, you have to do this, you have to mm. do this, yes. uh, and you have to pay it. So, so you, got the, you got the initial approval, yeah. but when you're building, now yeah. comes the building inspectors. Yeah, or whoever so they, yeah they, they come and then every, every time something is changing um, mm. when, you, when you build. That's fun. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. so and then uh, out of this... By, by the way, for the people watching, this has a happy ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. No, so and, and out of this, I, I, I re researched myself how mm. to develop plots. And then I 
I got some plots from a big um, company mm -hmm. where I knew they sell it. And um, I did the next pitch and I got a new investor, which is still my partner, very mm -hmm. good friend also. And uh, we bought a lot of plots. We bought like in the first two years of nearly a million square meter of plots mm. all wow. over Germany, like really empty plots where nothing was there. Mm. And then we started to do developings with some architects and presented to the um, little governments of the mm. little cities. And we were successfully with each plot. So there was not even one plot, which then at the end, there was not like coming a big little city, you know? So we are building, we did like a lot of townhouses, but we are talking yeah. about between 50 and 150 townhouses. Yes. Double houses, little villas, um, apartments, kindergarten, mm -hmm. everything. That's great. So that's a, that's a big jump from what you were doing yeah. before. So that was a quite, so some, t some people say it's a lucky shot, but actually it was a lot of... It doesn't sound like a lucky shot because you're doing yeah, yeah. In many locations. It's not one clean shot. Yeah, it's, it's No, I mean, they were going into this uh, part of the business, but mm -hmm. I researched a lot, you know, how all this plot development, this master plan development mm. works, because normally this there are ex extra architects for master plan development. And mm -hmm. then you have the construction companies, which sometimes buy a plot and then take an architect who does this development. But mm -hmm. we were like the uh, first German company who bought the plots and did our, the, ourselves, you know, because I just saw, I mean, you have to have a long brief for this because you buy a plot, mm -hmm. you have to buy it cash. There's, it's very difficult to get um, fi financing from the bank because it's just empty. It's actually worth. But there's no cash flow. No cash flow. And it's worth because it's costing money. You have to buy, pay some ground taxes mm -hmm. every year uh, for the rain coming down, for uh, keep the, keep sure, the sure. plot clean. So it's actually worth. And then you have, the process is between three and six years to, mm -hmm. get, to getting an old plot, like an empty plot, to get the permission to build something. And then you need another three years maybe, or two or three years, mm. to build on it. So it's a very, very long process. I could see this would be interesting for crowdfunding. Yeah, we did a lot, we did uh, some crowdfundings, but not with the plots because the time is too long. We're doing mm. it sometimes um, to refinance our own capital in projects which already uh, have a permission, mm -hmm. and it's only the, the time from building and selling. Okay, interesting. Yeah. All right, so you're, you're working on the... You scaled massively. You, yeah. you found you found your niche. You scaled massively, and you were successful with this new partner. Yeah, who I guess is still your current partner. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. we own it together. That's great. And so, what what kind of time period is this? Well, that was from two. two we bought the first plot two thousand fifteen. Mm -hmm. So uh, five years after. So I I opened the company two thousand ten. I started end of two thousand eleven with the first project. Mm -hmm. It finished two thousand fourteen. Two thousand fourteen. We started in the process buying the first plot at mm -hmm. the end of the year. We bought them then two thousand fifteen, and from two thousand fifteen to two thousand eighteen, we bought like a million square meter of plots. And uh, but they were quite cheap. But the first money we mm -hmm. made actually then two thousand twenty two thousand twenty one. The real first money. Mm -hmm. we, I mean we sold. So there's some, a little pause. Yeah. So it was a long way, and uh, and then um, uh, we we sold mm. some plots, but we don't finally sold it. So then we made like a reservation with mm. some people, and they paid us like half a million or a million euros, and with this money we bought more plots, so we used it. So uh, I, I like this energy that builds up. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds a little Chinese, but uh, you know. <laughs> um, okay, and then they were. Your the, the green tower you're building without going into depth about that yet, w was the experience in Germany something that oriented you towards that kind of design? Yeah, Ger was, Germany's very focused on environment. Actually, and actually, when we um, the, the years went very quick and we were a little bit bored, so we started to do living a little bit. So we bought some big uh, houses with like uh -huh. hundred apartments and refurnished them, sold them. And then we were both sitting there. We were always like, you know, sitting what there. Now, what, what can yeah. we do? What can we do? And then we were like. And let's build a tower. And we said, where do we get a tower? And then uh, we were in Düsseldorf in mm -hmm. Germany. There was a tower from a company which didn't go on building it because they had no money. They were bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And then we start trying to get this tower. And uh, we, we that was the first time we were like um, working on a tower and having the experience. How much does it cost to build a tower? What are all the things around it? Mm -hmm. And uh, was that a big project in Düsseldorf? Yeah, yeah, but was we didn't do it. We, it didn't, we, just, we were just um, acquisition it, and then we were starting working on it and trying to find investors who buy it with us. Mm. But at the end, we, it came out that you have to, what they begin to build, you have mm. to get rid of it again, you have to get new permissions. It was too complicated. I saw some video on YouTube as I'm working on my German about the, mm. some real estate developer was trying to build a tower and the current 
uh, your current chancellor, or whatever you call him, was involved, mm. and it was like the. Ah, okay. But I don't, it, I, I don't think this was it. But okay, uh, you're making me think. No, of no. Japanese. Go ahead. And uh, and then I was on the fair. Like in Germany, you have once a year a fair in uh, Munich. Mm. And then I met a guy, really cool guy. He's now my business partner in the Green Tower. He's called Roland Weber. So mm. he built five high rises in uh, Russia. Okay. He built the uh, um, Evolution Tower in Moscow. So okay, he's sure. very experienced. He lives yeah. in Frankfurt. And uh, yeah, and then and then as we had this idea, we anyway want to build a tower. Then I was speaking. Okay, we. Let's do the green tower, and then he explained me all everything around the green tower, and we give also some input what we mm. saw the last year. So, because at the end, if you buy an apartment yourself, you have always you have the rate which you pay to the bank. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, the people forget the side costs. You know, like uh, um, like water, electricity, heating. In Germany, it's heating. Here, it's mm. uh, air conditioning, and um, you can't forget Diwa. It was very, it was very expensive here. Yeah. So, so, so we thought, okay, we have to optimize mm -hmm. this whole thing and make like a real green tower. So first of all, it was planned for Germany. Mm -hmm. um, Roland planned it also for for London. He had an investor there, but then the war started. Mm -hmm. So he had to. I think there was something with Russia mixed, and he's like a real. Uh, he's like. Is, is he Russian background? No, or? he's no, but he's a pro Ukraine. So he has like forty Ukraine people living in his house. He's really taking care of them. So he's a really nice guy. Okay. And um, so. And then I we meet and then we said, oh come on, I do the I do the project development part, like the commercial part, like mm. getting the funds and getting the plots, and then uh, let's do it in Dubai. Because I said my brother is there, he knows the market. He's mm. doing 17 years of real estate, very successfully. He has a construction. How much of this was just you wanted an excuse to move to Dubai? Yeah, no, I, yeah, actually I'm not. Or, or your wife did? Yeah, <laughs> my wife, uh, my kids are living in Dubai, and I am living in a plane. <laughs> so, okay. So, well, you didn't know that. Was, that yeah, you didn't so, necessarily know that was going to happen. No, because, You're like, honey, I have a good business reason to go to Dubai. Uh, yeah. She's like, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, actually, actually, they are they moved to Dubai now just mm. because of the secre security for our kids and the yes. school. Because the quality of the schools and the security is amazing here. Yeah. Of course, they also like the weather. Uh, I don't know yet how it will be in the summer because it will be a little bit hot. But not, not good. Yeah, but he. But mm. we said, okay, it's better to have three months of extremely hot mm. than having eight months of rain in Germany. So <laughs> I don't think you'll be here in the summer. You won't. Yeah. I, I, you won't be here the whole summer. We'll, uh, we'll see. We'll, we, make, we we'll, make see. A, we'll make a bed. So, so then I said, come on, Roland, let's build a tower in Dubai. So then I have another guy, Isaac, mm. you know, he, yeah, sure. uh, he connected us. So he's working for Roland. So now we are working since, I think, two years uh, on this tower. And then I said, okay, we have to go further on and further on. And now we mm. are watching a little bit the market, but we're very far in the development of the product. Mm. We presented the tower. Yeah, so what does that mean? You're, you're not constructing it yet. You're doing kind of what you did before, which is developing the idea. Yeah. Or so no, this time we really, so our idea, Idea is to buy now the plot. So we mm. have we have offered uh, three plots where the tower could fit. Mm. We have an offer from the government of Dubai. They're doing a new master plan at the Sheikh Zayed Road, yes. where they want to offer us a plot where we can build the tower in a joint venture. Mm -hmm. So um, and now we are currently still we are drawing and working further on the tower. So the renderings are finished, like mm. the, the floor plans are finished, but there's a lot to do. It's a lot of work. So so we but we are bringing a finished full um, design product to mm. uh, Dubai, which have, which is completely carbon zero. So we are talking about something completely innovative, this is new here. which you which you don't have here. And also we have like, Roland is really also a, a gardener, <laughs> I would say, no, but he's really okay. passionate for it. So we're making a sky garden nice. where you have like this red, red uh, orange plants here in Dubai, mm. which uh, the whole year they are really like looking nice. So, and then uh, in the special system, watering system, so. Mm. Roland explained me one time, you know what, plants love soap. Because he explained me that when you go to a shower, wash your hands, that mm -hmm. the water goes into the system and uh, goes from the up and down to, through the plants. Mm -hmm. And even there is some soap, it doesn't matter. So the plants like it. So also you can take your... They tolerate it or they like yeah, it? they like it. They like it. Okay. And they grow... Because I remember when I was small, mm -hmm. my uh, mother always had like a, a cup where she was washing the dishes mm -hmm. uh, with soap. And then later she puts it into the plants. And I, I, I never thought about this until mm. I talked to Roland and he told me that uh, plants like soap. Okay. So, <laughs> who knew? Yeah. So, mm. and yeah, we are we are having there um, like um, three um, three classes windows. So in Dubai, they're still building mm -hmm. with two, but there's like a specialty, there's this three glass windows in the la between the last two um, glasses. There's like a shading system inside. So just to be clear, on the, ex on the, ex on the exterior of the building, you have three panes of glass yeah. kind of layered with each other. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, so stick we have together. The outside, you have the inside and in yeah, in the middle. Three. Yes. And then what's between them? A shadow system. Okay, so and what does that mean? So that means we keep the sun out. So like it's, a, it's a special system where where the when the sun comes, it reflects and goes out. But okay. not like this. Uh, you know what? I don't like here when I always see this um, the, when they just stick um, a mirror on the glass. Yeah, it, it can looks, actually burn you on the on, yeah, on the and ground. Yeah, or make the glass black. You know mm. what's really when you when you we just got a car here and mm. the windows are black. Also in the front, mm -hmm. it's because of the sun later in the summer. But it's very difficult in the night to mm -hmm. drive, but because you want to look to the side and it's just dark. Huh? It's sure. quite, quite complicated. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe it protects you from people staring in. Also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in, in Germany, it's not allowed. In yeah. the US, it's not allowed either. You, uh, you can't. I think it's dark. the only country where, where it's allowed. Anyway, I mean, even here, sometimes they have the front mm -hmm. uh, window black, so you don't know anything who's in there. You cannot Scary. see anything. Yeah. Okay, so w w is, you said you're looking at three plots in Dubai? Yeah, so, we got, Dubai? No, so, so we, we got offered a lot of plots. So I was here with Roland Isaac, and we mm. did here a lot, of, a lot of viewings with a lot of agents. First of all, you have to really explain the agents what we need. So we need like 6,000 square meter plot, and we need to build at least uh, 45 stories. Mm -hmm. But the perfect thing is between 50 and 60 stories. Mm -hmm. 70 is too high. So we also don't need a plot where you can build as high as you want because you pay too much yes. for something you will not build. Uh, so you have um, different um, possibilities, how much um, GFA you can build on the plot. Mm -hmm. So um, that was quite a, lo a lot of work to go through so all this. Let me ask you, is that a function of the quality of the ground or the substrate, or is that a function no, of the legal the, the legal permission? So okay. also Dubai, like every country, is doing uh, master plans. Mm. So they are these. I mean, you, you know, the ruler here, mm. Sheikh Mohammed, he has a really clear view of uh, in his future or how Dubai looks. So they're making master plans to see, okay, where I want to have how many buildings, how many high rises, where do I put villas, where mm -hmm. I put townhouses, where's commercial, where the malls. So, I mean, you see, Dubai is really good organized sure. so so it's just not that you can buy a plot and uh, make a permission say oh i want to buy a, build a high rise and the next one comes oh no i want to build an office building and the next puts so all you know like dfc you have all mm -hmm. the office building of course you have also some apartments and the malls are on special places where they're also the the streets you know um, i think here for example rta the, the whole street thing is really good cool so in, in, compared to other cities or lands compared, you know yes. or to europe so they're really they know exactly how to do. I mean, they're building the, some the only issue with Dubai is, is if you miss your exit. Yeah, then uh, you're lost. You're, you're like on a safari in yeah, the yeah, desert, yeah. and yeah, it takes so, you an hour to get you back. No, it's it's hard because <laughs> you drive with Google uh, with Google Maps, mm. and then when you take when you take it once the wrong thing, and you have like ten minutes left to your destination, and then suddenly yeah. you have half an hour left. And then you say, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, or, it's, or your Uber driver does it. And you're like, yeah. he's like, sorry, it's my first day. I'm like, really? Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> I, I found the one Uber driver in Dubai where it's his first day yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, great. No, but mm -hmm. I think there, there's also another app now I, I hear, which, but it's really difficult because it, all the streets sound the same. So, but because you need to, I think if you have spent some time here, then mm -hmm. it will go easier, but it's quite difficult. So I think this will. It, it maybe just is what it is. Yeah. Well, well, I get to listen to my podcast. So if yeah. it ever takes, as long as I'm not late for an appointment, I can just listen to my podcast and, and relax. And yeah. just, you know, except that Allah has a plan for me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, where did no, we, so, sorry, let me ask you would, would you potentially build it outside of Dubai, like Ras Al Khaimah? No, so, yeah, I was also at Ras Al, uh, Ras Al mm. So we were there sitting with the CEO from Ras Al Khaimah and with the planner there. They're also doing a new master plan. They're doing Al Majar Island. Uh, there was the casino is currently building, so they already yes. start, but there is no space for a tower. Uh, they're doing their uh, own DFC, mm. but um, they don't have the height. So, also, their master plan is limited, and I think it's 29 stories, the only plot which they could offer us and it's mm. just too small because our green tower is a twisted tower and you mm. need a certain twist so that the tower works so mm. our, it's not that just we're building a tower normally up and exactly. it has some green features no it's a twisted tower where you have like a square which is going like this mm -hmm. always which makes all this efficiency in building the tower and also in energy saving and also in terms of building costs and let there we come back to the carbon zero and the, and mm. the amount of material you use in the tower and how stable it is. No? So there are different, there so many techniques. I mean, I'm also learning it. This, no? It's my first sure. tower, but like, uh, luckily I've Roland is well, there. Got he's partners. Yeah, he's yeah. completely um, 
crazy with this tower and it's really I, 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 it's so interesting and mm -hmm. fascinating uh, to work on something like this um, yeah that we are all very, we are all very motivated mm -hmm. and now uh, we are currently so, so, sorry just to finish the prior yeah. idea so it's, it's interesting so you, your floors each one like say is a five degree move yeah. and I guess that would imply that you need to have a certain height yeah. in order for to do a complete rotation yeah, as so that's you go why up. we need at least this 45 stories and cannot build the tower in like uh, 30 stories. It's okay. too small. Interesting. Huh. What's your anticipated... When, when will it be done? Well, Inshallah. Our, current, our current plan was actually to um, having the, the funds ready mm -hmm. um, after Easter. Well, now. So, mm -hmm. But we, we lag a little bit behind with our business plan. Mm -hmm. um, we have some American and Australian funds which uh, want to step in as investor. We have some family offices. So um, there's quite a lot of interest because of the product himself. Mm -hmm. Um, we have some joint venture partners, either the government, also some locals. Um, mm. So we're a little bit sorting out. The problem is that we have the feeling that the market is going a little bit down. We had the highest peak ever on the complete real estate market. So the, you think it's going down? The, the curves are always like, I'm not thinking that it's going to break down like with Corona or like mm. uh, 2006, but I think there will be a little correction. Uh, at least on the high uh, on the high side, like on the high luxury um, real estate side. When I came here okay. and looked at houses in December, mm. um, there was like this one townhouse. It was like 12 million dirham. And uh, now last week I got offered the same house for 10 million dirham. So there's already a little bit of university uh, feeling in the market. That's what at least we get. We work very close with Night Frank, with CBRE, mm -hmm. with all this bigger, uh, with Christie's and together. And they all give us the same impression. Maybe it's not that big. Maybe it's just like ten percent, or maybe a little, a little. Look, you would you would surely know better than I do, yeah. because you know it's not my lane. Well, actually, nobody knows. Mm. It's just feelings the people have, and some have to. Some say oh, there's coming so much population to Dubai. Yeah, there will be no, not even any movement in the market. But it's still it's so much money now. I mean, I'm I know Dubai now for twenty years. I'm coming mm. here regularly. And the, the, how expensive Dubai became is at the end, I don't know how many people will be there at the end who can pay this high. I think, there, I think you have a lot of um, normal workers mm. and you love rich people. But like this middle part, you know, I think it's a little bit this. Um, but are, 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 the, are, the, are the middle class, for lack of a better word, buying the kind of property that you just described? Mm. Well, I, mean, yes. I don't so think we are, so. We are not doing this high luxury. So we are doing mm. it luxury, but our, our aim is to sell like at. 3,000, 300, 3,500 on average per square feet. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, and this is uh, like compared to the, some new tower, this is quite cheap. Mm. It's uh, going, um, yeah, and so I don't know, we will see. So our, our just our, we are a little bit, so our investors, which mm. where we had the first speech with, they were saying, yeah, let's wait a little bit and see how in summer develops the real estate market, how mm. the next winter, so the high season will pick up because um, so far all the plots we looked at, they have not been sold the last year. So mm -hmm. we started with looking on the plots last year or Easter, and nothing happened. They're all still on the market. So, sorry, just to be clear, the, mm -hmm. the, the plots you're looking at where you may want to build a tower yes. are still on the market. Yes. Okay, and are, are you are you buying directly from the government? or is No, no, no. We are buy So the plots we are looking at, we, are, mm -hmm. we can buy from private, from locals, from Emiratis. Okay. But the, um, the plot from the government is not for sale. They only do joint venture. So they're saying, okay, okay. we make a 50-50 joint venture. We bring the plot, you bring the money, and we build the tower. And then title to the plot remains with the government? Yeah, yeah. No, no. It, it, goes to, it, was, it will be assigned to the joint venture company. To the joint venture. Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, but there where we... So there, it was a long way really to convince them, but... They were really, they're really surprised about mm. uh, about the tower, and with them we shared already after an NDA some more details about mm. the tower and how it be constructed. You also meet a lot of people here. They're just asking, uh, "How do you do it?" and uh, "Give me your plans, give me everything, and I can I use it for my tower?" <laughs> so we had a lot of uh, also funny and uh, well strange um, experience. Obviously, that obviously that shady the way it was just described, but mm. when you bring these techniques here. Uh, there, you know, there may be a licensing opportunity also. Yeah, yeah, we have to we have to work on this as well. So our I mean, you know, and if the governments, we just had you know, we just mm. had COP twenty eight here. Yeah, yeah. So if you're truly producing carbon neutral or carbon negative buildings, 
mm. with these proprietary techniques. That's something I think maybe the government can get behind. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, so that's why that's why they're also the government. I mean, it's it's, it's called WTC. Mm -hmm. It's um, the where the where the where the um, World Trade fairs, Center. Yeah, World yeah. Trade Center where the fairs are, and uh, they're making a new master plan. You know, they're demolishing something there and um, uh, some old buildings and making mm -hmm. a whole new master plan. And they were really convinced about it, and they said, "Yeah, that's we want to have it your product here." So. So, so currently Great. we are Perfect. we are working on the business plan to fin finalize it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on the construction cost and uh, doing a lot of research. We're working with a lot of big companies and architect. Our architects are from Chicago, and mm -hmm. so it's quite it's quite a, a long story. But coming back to the question, yeah, it will take like five years at least. So our aim is to go uh, on the, to have the plot and everything ready mm -hmm. by uh, before Christmas and uh, going on sale um, next uh, beginning of next year. And okay, then, so it's usual to buy a thing where people pay yeah. at, at some point and then wait one or two years for delivery or yeah. whatever. Okay. So there is it. You, uh, we've, we need a lot of the planning phase is very long. So you need at least one year to mm -hmm. plan this thing completely finished with the permissions and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you need to put some money on an escrow account because yes. Dubai the ones does not want to have more towers which are not finished built. So you have to build uh, to pay a certain amount of your construction costs on account. Mm -hmm. So in the worst case, you are not there anymore or something happens. There is money there to finish the tower. I think that's frustrating for some people, but I think it's very smart yeah. given what happened before. I mean, we have some towers in the marina. There are there. I mean, also this, I think, was it, was it, was it the... Um, uh, the Boris Becker Tower or something. Some German guy did started. I don't know, ten, twelve like years ago. Like the tennis player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there was this one tower. I thought he went bankrupt. The, yeah, and the raw <laughs> building is still there. Okay. Since I remember, since the first time I was there in the marina, since there you have mm. this raw building and nothing is happening. With it. And they have problems with demolishing a building a tower sure, here, of course, because they're not allowed to do uh, to use any dynamite. Like in Germany, when you have an old tower or mm. a big building, or in Europe, you just explode it. And, you know, you make a professional. Yeah. Explosation. So what do they do here? Yeah, they do it with the hands. So they're not doing it. They just leave it. That's a problem. Yes. And there's that, I think, clock tower on Sheikh Zayed Road. Yeah. You know, impressive and huge and completely mm. empty. Yeah. So, okay, very interesting. Okay, so Dubai learned from yeah. past experiences and they require a significant mm. down payment or escrow amount yeah. for their own security and the security, yeah. I think, of the, of the unit buyers. Yes. Okay, interesting. And then... So you're in, you're in the design phase. I don't know what what else can you tell us about it. Yeah. So so <laughs> so, so how I come to do so I always looked uh, in all the last ten years on other markets and mm -hmm. always find this interesting. So I did some we did some real estate projects in Mallorca. We just finished a complete villa. It's now for sale there. Yeah. So and then as I often visit, I may want it. How much is it? Uh, like three point eight million euros. It's oh, uh, no, no problem. But yeah. uh, it's so. I visit always my brother and I saw how Dubai developed over mm -hmm. the years. So I always found it interesting. So I said, okay, let's, we need to do something, you know, to see. Mm -hmm. it. Maybe it's too late, but uh, because maybe it would, was more interest, even more interesting at the beginning. But I think Never now we are coming, yeah, and now we are coming with something, with a new product. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so I'm, I'm always uh, traveling a lot and uh, going through Germany, handling all my projects. So mm -hmm. I still live in Germany and my family lives now here and I'm, um, Really? Of, yeah, a lot of times. So I fly uh, Mondays to Frankfurt. So in the morning at three o'clock, then mm -hmm. you are at eight o'clock in the office, and then I fly Friday back to to Dubai. To I didn't know that. Okay, you're you're really commuting back and forth. Yeah, yeah. So so the, so, but the thing is, mm -hmm. it's nicer than to have a night because within the week, mm -hmm. it's anyway, it's just work, you know. So I have I can more work much more efficient, mm -hmm. and my kids they have here school. So I'm anyway, uh, I mean, just for the dinner. Okay. Go together with them, it's better to ha have a nicer life. And then when I'm here on the weekends, you can do much more cooler things. It's like Jenny's home, uh, and then you can do much more cooler things than in uh, Germany, actually. Fantastic. Now, and, I, I mean, you have a lot of you have a lot of bank holidays in Germany. You have uh, I don't know, so it's uh, like it's not that. I wow, interesting life. Yeah, I like it. Okay, well, well I've yeah. enjoying getting and to know you. And you know what? In the when I'm in the planes, mm -hmm. I write my books. I think we're gonna. I think we're leading up to something when yeah. you say that. We're, Tell me about the book and yeah. So the first book I wrote is about my life, the last ten years, how I increased, uh, how I developed the company. I, I wrote it between Corona when I mm. was bored a little bit, uh, like most people. Yes. And the second book is like you know the Monopoly game. Yes. So it's about Monopoly. So how to build uh, your own uh, real estate investment portfolio up. 
um, how that this works from the beginning to the end. So there okay. are different Spain. It's in German. So I uh, brought I, you. I, I lese yeah. Deutsch. Yeah. So I, I brought you one. Uh, oh one, my gosh. Uh, it's uh, one nice Monopoly book. Beautiful. So um, yeah. So and now I'm, I'm currently wrote, writing two more. Is books. this a present? Yeah, of course. Will uh, you sign your present? Of course. Uh. Okay. So uh, and now I'm. I'm currently writing uh, two more books, mm -hmm. one about e e ESG, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, one about um, uh, financial, uh, financing real estate, so like uh, loans, mezzanine, and everything like this. This is uh, great. Yeah. I know when I met you and you were telling me about the books, I was, <laughs> this is clever. I like it. I write, I write it in German. So it's all, uh, so you have your own Monopoly book. I'm very happy. I'm gonna. It's a little bit uh, uh, maybe difficult for you as a uh, to read because you're not so good yet in German. But it's because it's very um, real estate. You know, a lot of words. My, like, my friend, was that a challenge? Uh, we will see. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call you on that one. Yeah. What's it? Now, now, now. now. I'm actually, but it's glad, no, it's I'm actually glad you said that because now uh, you motivated me to show me you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> okay, which means I'll learn lots of German. But no, I really appreciate the gift. I'll learn a lot, yeah. you know, and I'll and I'll read your other books as well. Yeah. Either the ones that are out or the ones that are coming. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is fantastic. I mean, I I wish you huge success. I think you're a very innovative, interesting guy. I, I really like your background in Mallorca and in Germany and here and how you're sort of crossing and bridging these worlds. I think Dubai is lucky to have you. Yeah. Um, Thanks. It's just a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you having me on the show. Thank you so much.